Buddy, it's 1230 uh, here on the East Coast, 930 over uh, on the Pacific time zone. And uh, my name is Alex Johnson. I'm the director of digital marketing here at Heart Zones. And I'm joined by founder and CEO, Sally Edwards. And uh, today we're just looking to do, uh, looking to walk people through a little bit of uh, a conversation about uh, the revolution of smart devices, uh, the power of wearables. Uh, this is a big topic uh, in the fitness industry. In 2015, it was uh, the number one trend. Uh, wearables were the number one trend uh, within the fitness industry. And uh, we just want to spend a little bit of time discussing kind of the revolution of them, uh, where they came from, uh, kind of, you know, Sally's journey with wearables as a professional triathlete and endurance athlete and um, kind of where they are today and you know, what you need to be paying attention to um, as you try to dip your dip yourself into that that world whether you're a, a personal trainer or a cycling instructor or you're just a, you know someone who's an, you're an athlete or you're someone who's looking to just figure out how to apply uh, a wearable that somebody bought you for Christmas or for your birthday or you that you got for yourself so um, I'm going to go ahead and pull Sally in. Um, we're just going to enjoy having a little conversation about what wearables have meant to us and um, what we think, or what we think you really need to know about them and how they can help you. So Sally, how are you doing this morning? Fine, Alex. And I'm really looking forward to a great conversation about the power of wearables. And I want to kind of start if we can just hop right into it with some definitions and anybody who would like a copy of this presentation, um, Alex, can you share how they can do that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you yeah, know, at the end of this, we will, um, you know, we're, we're, it's, a, it's a new experience for us here on the webinar. So what we'll probably do is, is make this available through a link uh, that you can find on our website. And uh, we will post this presentation on the website as well. So um, both of those should be found in the same place. Um, and uh, at worst case, you can contact me and I'd be happy to share that with you. Okay, so definitions. What is a wearable? Well, there are different kinds of wearables. There's trackables because we want to collect data and track people and, and, and make meaning out of data. And big data is a huge um, uh, challenge for most of us. Trainables. Trainables are, can we give a prescription or a suggestion while you're using your wearable about, you know, should you go faster? Do you want to change the music? Where, where is your location? How many steps are you taking? And, you know, if you want to optimize any of those. And hearables are, they're kind of on the forefront, which is putting uh, smart devices in our ears and where we can really pick up a lot of physiology. Sensors, we are surrounded with sensors. There's all kinds of sensors and they're collecting this data. Um, and those sensors are now being put into smart fabrics. And the, the picture here of the guy wearing his smart shirt is a good example. And one day I, I foresee, for example, in physical education, school kids, if you remember what you wore for your clothing, and they will be not wearing the t-shirt with a school logo, but they're going to be wearing smart fabrics. And it's going to be, that's an exciting forefront of physical education. And then what is a smart device? When we're surrounded with smart homes and smart cars and smart phones, a smart device is two different definitions. It's anything that connects to the internet, and the, that's the internet of things, the IoT it's called, or anything that has a chip in it. So the world of smart devices is going to do nothing but grow. And where did it start? Where, where I bought my first wearable in 1983 because I won to... Um, uh, I, I was qualified for the women's very first one, Olympic Marathon Trials. 200 of the fastest women in America were invited, and Joan Benoit Samuelson won those at first trials, and I ran in them. I had on my uh, $500 polar heart rate monitor thinking everyone's going to do this, and I was incorrect. Uh, it's taken <laughs> us 30 years. And Alex, when did you start wearing your first wearable? Uh, I wore my first wearable after I met you. Um, <laughs> so, you know, it, it took someone who was an instigator, uh, um, you know, uh, an early adopter to, to get me to even realize that it was important um, to what I was doing. Um, I was playing college golf at the time and um, we were training really hard, um, but I had never really even been introduced to a heart rate monitor or to a wearable of any sort at that point. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't very big. Um, and, you know, for me, that's, it's not all that long ago. I'm talking between 2007, 2011, when I was in college, 
Um, and even then, wearables weren't a trendy thing to be doing at that particular time. So, um, but that was, once I met you, that was really the first time that um, I started to learn what it meant and, and what, the, what, the, what a wearable could do for me. It was, it was pretty cool. Oh, good. Well, and I hope it made your golf game better because that's the whole point of having uh, sensors that are measuring and tracking and helping us train and prescription and giving us advice. I want to encourage everyone to watch this video. We're not going to watch it right now, which is the very early idea of what wearables would be. And that takes us to the present time. So where are we now and where are we going? And wearables are going to surround our lives. They are um, all part of, in part, the uh, called QS movement, the quantum, quantified self. So uh, as, an, as a human being, I want to know certain things about how I eat and what I do 24 hours a day. And a wearable gives us that opportunity to be able to do that. But what is coming in the future is really, really interesting. Right now, where we are, the three phases is the wearables are able to collect data. They're able to display data, share it, and store it. The phase two is what do all these numbers mean? And I've given you an example of our Heart Zones training iPhone and iPad app, which is on the right-hand side of the screen, that when you're working out in our app with your, in this case, the wearable is a heart rate monitor, but it doesn't matter if it's a power meter for a bike or um, uh, other, we have other displays for other t types of sensors. Remember what a sensor is. And the buckets, the paint buckets in the bottom should get a really good visual representation that the blue bucket is empty. The green bucket only has a little bit of paint in it because I didn't do a very great job in that workout of warming up. And I love yellow, orange, and red, which is high intensity. So that's not what I want to recommend, but it gives you a visual. So there's lots coming in the future of wearable. The Probably the largest application is going to be for health. How can we help America get fitter and healthier? And one of the ways is to ha have people start using wearables and look at their individual physiology. Sally, if you don't what? mind, um, I don't want to jump in there really fast. If you, if you don't mind scrolling back up to that slide that we were just on. Sure. I think, you know, you and I have a lot of conversations uh, about these three phases um, and as you know as heart zones as we take uh, our heart zone system this you know group fitness technology that uses wearables um, and we put it into school physical education into cycling studios and health clubs and uh, we've talked a lot about these phases and then just about individual wearable users um, you know, talk just a, a minute about how you know looking at this graph that you're showing as an output from you know, the individual heart zones app, um, how someone, you know, one, obviously they've worn a device, they've done phase one, uh, they've collected data. Um, but now they're looking at this, you know, take just a, a minute here and explain, okay, what's the meaning of this data to you? And then if you have a quick prescription, um, an, an example of how you can use that to create a prescription, that would be uh, something that I think a lot of people would, would find interesting. Sure. So if you look at the top um, uh, picture, which is a profile, a graph of heart rate starts in the blue and then you move in the green, yellow, orange, you're going harder and harder and harder all the way up to the red. The My peak heart rate in this workout was 153 beats per minute for my heart rate sensor. And I got 127 points in a lapse time of 30 minutes. So that's a lot of data. But what does it mean? It means that I want to try to get 100 um, fit points, frequency, intensity, and time, the fit formula. I want to get those in 30 minutes and I accomplish that. So great kudos for me. In, in an hour, I want to get 200 fit points. So my total points were exactly on target and better. My time and zone, which are the buckets in the bottom. And so this prescription is really, is, is what is it I need to do the next day? I need to take an easy day because I like hard days, easy day, hard days, easy day. And for the first time, I can measure and quantify that this was a hard day. 
So I, uh, I love the data. I love the Hearts on Training iPhone app. And I, of course, now going to change to the slide. There is a huge proliferation of wearables. There are so many kinds now. And you can see the graph where we're going by 2019. There'll be 214 million wear people wearing wearables. That is a mm -hmm. astounding number with the gr qu quick growth and the number of wearable devices. Sally, are you there? Just about it. I am nope. here. Sally, I just had a small disconnection there on my end, so I'm not sure everybody heard you. Um, you you left off just about the the you know talk leading into the growth of the market. If you just want to repeat maybe the last 15 seconds or so, that might be helpful. Okay, sorry about that. So the proliferation, the number of different devices and what they do and how they do it is growing rapidly, as are the number of people using them, which is great news for uh, the mission of, of smart fitness. What is the next slide that I'm showing is the blink armband on the bottom left. That's a sensor that blinks colors that match the color of the zones. Activity trackers are foot pods. And, but in the middle is these are all the sensors that are currently available that we can now connect to and collect data from all of these different sensors. And there's about 25 of them. So as Heart Zones uh, continues to grow, we'll continue to connect to these different wearables and provide meaningful data that will lead to those three phases. Um, so how does that wearable really work? Well, it's a connection device and it's connecting by two, well, actually the three different ways that signals are broadcast. So I have my wearable, let's say it's a step tracker. It's on my ankle and it's measuring, it's got an accelerometer built into it and that data needs to be sent to my device. And being sent means broadcast. It's a radio. Inside of every wearable, there's a radio that's broadcasting on a different frequency, like an AM, FM radio broadcast. And there are three standard ways to broadcast, one called Ant Plus, which is powerful, and Bluetooth, which is has its, um, its great uh, radio protocol, it has some limitations. I'm not going to go into broadcasting radio signals. Rather, then once it's broadcast, it needs to go to some place where I can see the data. And here are five different displays of waste in the hard zones world. We're collecting data is on mobile devices. We're displaying them on wrist tops or big boards. And um, and in and, and either an individual application or a group application. So we provide both of those. So um, Alex, where do you like to wear? What part of your body do you like to put your wearable on? Uh, I'm a wrist guy. I like watches. Um, so, you know, that's, that's probably where uh, I, I wear the majority of it, whether it's a, a Garmin GPS running watch that my, my wife and I use, or whether it's a blink armband, you know, I'll wear it kind of in the middle of my arm, but you know, middle of my arm or my wrist are kind of the two main spots that you'll find me with a wearable device. Okay, well, that's good. You're, it depends on what sensor you're using, what part of your body, and the body is has lots of different locations of where to uh, attach that wearable to start that data collection, broadcasting that data, having a, a, a I'm, I'm giving you the pathway of how this happens. This is a great slide, and I, I've listed the source of it just to show you all the features and analyzing, because I'm constantly asked, a hey, coach Sally, what wearable should I be buying? And my answer always will be, what do you want data do you want to look at? And why are you using it? So this is a feature chart on, and Alex, what's the most important piece of data that you like to get? Uh, for me, it's twofold. You know, I mean, having, you know, been involved with you for so long, you know, I'm always looking to figure out, um, you know, what heart rate zones I was operating in after a workout. Um, and then, you know, especially when I run, I'm, I'm looking for, for my distance and my pace. Um, uh, so those are kind of three data points, you know, that I really look for. 
Oh, good. Okay. So in the health club, there's lots of different applications for using wearables. And I hope health clubs open the doors and say, hey, member, bring that wearable into this club. And we are going to both help you understand the data. And we're going to encourage you to use it because this is you working out. And But there's lots of other applications. Um, Alex just talks about how he uses his heart rate monitor for golf. But Almost any activity that you want to do, there is an application uh, for using that. And here's some examples. And I then want to share is where, what channel. So a channel is what consumers are using. It is the medical consumer, which is the on your far left, all the way out to that person who's outdoor doing tactical, which is you know, that kind of military approach to fitness. And the um, different channels are moving into each other's space. And that's good in many ways because then we can in include that both that recreational athlete as well as that wellness consumers to start tracking their data. Why, which is the big question, and I always think we start with the question, why do we want to use a wearable or a smart device? And if you're a, a part of a health club, the, the, the reasons are really clear. If you're part of um, just the general fitness, we are experiencing this, uh, you can call it come to not Jesus, but come to reality about what's going on in the many countries in the world facing obesity epidemics. And um, But I think the real reason to wear um, a wearable is because it's the right thing to do. And I always want us to do the right thing. And collecting data, making sense out of data, and pres making prescriptions out using individual personal data, I think, is the right thing to do. Uh, Alex, share why you love your wearable. Yeah. You know, for me, I'm always asking myself the question, you know, being a competitive uh, golfer, you know, I kind of had it ingrained into me is that um, if somebody beats me because they beat me and we had the same technology, the same equipment, um, then that's great. Kudos to that person. Um, but if they beat me because they had – uh, a piece of equipment or a piece of technology that I didn't have or that I chose not to, to use, um, then shame on me. Um, and I think that now to me, wearables, you know, in, in just applying that to my personal fitness, which has got to be one of the most important things to anybody, um, it, it, it does so much for my emotional health, for my mental health, for my physical health, for, for so many things. And a wearable gives me um, really great information that I can use to, to help me continue to move forward, to help me know what the right thing is for my body, to help me know um, how to get better. And I'm, I'm the guy who's always looking to, to get better in, in any area of life. Um, and a wearable gives me the information um, that I feel like I need uh, to do that in the best, in the best way possible. Yes, and I should share Alex is a professional golfer, and uh, yes, he's the head of digital marketing for Heart Zones Inc., but his heart is, really lies deeply in his love for golf, and wearables can really help make you a better athlete and a better player. Um, and one of those is if you are involved in the health club market, here's uh, fitness is going mobile. We are a mobile society today with over 50% of Americans at least having a smart device that they're using uh, and apps that they're loving. And I want to talk a little bit about apps that are, are available. But the trend today, the number one trend in the United States is wearable technology. And it and explains that why it's become so popular so fast, so powerful to motivate and engage people. Um, because it when you see that data, Alex, that is you. That's not some made up person. So if you're sitting in, in, in a quiet position and you have a heart rate of 90 beats a minute, it's a wake up call that, it, that it's time to do something. And, and I'm thrilled that the number one health trend in America is wearable, um, using wearable devices. It's pretty amazing to think that, you know, what was 1983 you said it was uh, at the Olympic trials? You know, yes. when, when it felt like, you know, you had a, a heart rate monitor and you said, everybody's going to be doing this. And it wasn't until 2015, 2016 that everybody's doing that. 
but it, it's, it's about time. Uh, it's, you know, more, I think you were probably more excited than anybody that that time has come. I am. I was excited that this perfect storm came together. The perfect storm is that these devices are affordable. When I bought my first heart rate monitor, it was a Polar Vantage XL that cost $500. And I thought everybody would spend $500. The perfect storm is the, the health has become a preventative within, in this country with the Affordable Health Care Act. Uh, um, individual responsibility for being healthy is for forefront. The obesity epidemic and the number of fast food chains and the poor, the stress we're living in, we now have stress monitors that will measure, you know, how much physical, emotional, and um, uh, activity stress you're experiencing. And so the perfect storm has brought it all together where now people are buying wearables, it's popular, it's fashion, fitness, fun, all put together. And that I want to provide everyone with some resources as I'm getting close to concluding our presentation because I want you to learn more about listen to other pod and listen to podcasts and learn more about wearables and figure out how you're going to apply them. And I, I have um, some quotes I now want to share with everybody about wearables. They have become a bit of a fashion trend, and we really want people to use them, not wear them. Um, and Alex, you live on the east coast of the United States. I live on the west coast. Do you see that trend as well? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I can't tell you how many friends of mine have just picked up uh, a jawbone or a, a Fitbit or whatever it might be um, just so that they can wear it. I mean, it's almost a cool thing to do. Um, and yeah, my challenge to them is always, <laughs> are you using it? Um, so. Correct. And um, so this is the end of our slideshow. And I want to share what I think is, is uh, probably the, one of the most significant comments that I have made here, which is when you put a little device on your body, I don't care where on your body, I, don't, I am um, agnostic to who the manufacturers are. Of course, we love our Blink 3.0. It's a multi-sensor, multi-broadcast, fabulous device. But uh, it, it put it, put a step tracker. Use a power meter on your bike. Uh, look at heart rate. Look at data. When you do that, is apps. It will change your behavior. And one of the things we need to do is help this country move more. And that is a behavioral change when my little wearable buzzes on my arms or blinks at me or says, hey, it's time to stand up and we need to move, we need to stand up, we need to burn calories and our wearable can help motivate us and empower and engage us in doing that. And I think that's the power of the smart revolution. And I wanna thank you. And Alex, maybe you can conclude with a, you know, what, what's your take home from our web is. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much for, you know, taking 20 minutes out of a, a really busy day that um, if you don't know Sally Edwards, she gets uh, more emails and more phone calls than you would care to, uh, but she has more energy and more enthusiasm about what she's doing than any woman I've ever met. Um, so really thankful that you, know, you spent some time to talk to everybody about wearables and what they mean to you and um, why they're so important. And yeah, I mean, for me, I think that I just want to really encourage anybody that happens to watch this webinar um, and to reach out to us, reach out to Heart Zones, and you know start to start to learn, you know how to go from phase one to phase two and to phase three. Um, and whether you're, like I said at the beginning, whether you're a physical, tra a personal trainer, or a cycling instructor, or you're a, a professional athlete, or you're um, an everyday uh, individual who's looking to improve their fitness, you know wearables are the number one trend right now for a reason, um, but there's so much more that you can do with them. And I've been privileged to work with Sally and to learn some of those things, um, but reach out to us and start to learn how to go from phase one to phase two and from phase two to phase three. And when you move through those phases, uh, I, you know, I firmly believe that the results in your life and in your fitness are exponential um, and incredible. So, um, I'm really excited to continue journeying on. And if you have questions about this webinar, um, please reach out to me. You can email me at alex.johnson at heartzones.com. 
Um, we would love to hear from you. Um, and we're going to continue this webinar series. Uh, if you have topics that you would love to, you would like to hear about in the future or, you know, things in particular about a, a part of wearables or just, you know, overall fitness in general, um, send them our way. And we, we would love to talk about them uh, and share more about what we love to do uh, with you. So thanks for tuning in and uh, we will look forward to seeing you next time. All right. Thanks, Alex. It was great. Perfect. Thanks, Sally. All right. Bye. Bye.